In today's video, we're going to be building the default app that is generated whenever we create a Flutter project. This app is going to have an app bar, a text widget, and a floating action button. We're going to build it from scratch, and I'm going to show you how to organize your code in different files. Create a new project. I'm going to name my project using buttons. Set the languages to Java and Swift and add an organization identifier. For this tutorial, I recommend that you use a physical device. I had difficulties getting the button text to display, but when it ran on the emulator, there were no issues. Delete the default code except the first line. That allows us to use material in our app. Delete the widget test.dart file. Next, create a directory in the lib folder and name it UI. Let's create a Dart file and name it home. Import material and then return to main.dart. In order to use this Dart file that we just created, we need to import it. We type dot and this takes us to the root folder and then we type forward slash and this allows us to access the UI folder. Then we type the name of the file that we created and we include the extension. The main method is the entry point into our app and we're going to call run app inside of this method. Inside of this method, we're going to create a new material app and we're going to give it a title. I'm going to name it using buttons and we're going to set the home to a home object. In home.dart, create a class home, which extends a stateful widget. A stateful widget has properties that are mutable. If you have variables or a text widget, for example, and you intend to change their value, then you should use a stateful widget. Right click on home and add the missing override and it presents us with this method called create state, which returns a state. A state is made up of a list of stateful widgets. We're going to set it to return new home screen state, which is a class that we haven't created yet. Right click on home screen state to create the class. We are going to extend state and pass in our home widget. Right click on home screen state and add the missing override. Next, let's create a variable called counter and give it the underscore prefix because we want it to be private and give it an initial value of zero. Next, create a method which increases this counter value. We need to call set state inside of this method and pass in our method body. For more information on set state, check the documentation in the link below. In this method, we just want to increase the counter by one. We now need to build the user interface and we can do this using the scaffold material widget. The scaffold widget helps you with your material design widgets. This widget has the app bar, so let's create a new app bar and set the title to using buttons and run the app to see how it looks. Once again, I recommend that you use a physical device because sometimes the emulator doesn't work as it should. Using Genymotion caused some display errors and the Andy emulator which was working last week has stopped after Windows 10 was updated. I am running this on my Note 5, and you see the default blue color for the app bar. Next, let's create a body widget. This holds the primary content of the scaffold. Inside of the body widget, we will create a center widget. Inside of the center widget, we are going to have one child, and this is going to be a text widget. We're going to pass the raw value of our counter variable by using the dollar sign. We're going to give the text widget some style and set the font color to blue if it's an even number and red if it's an odd number. 
This is achieved by using the ternary operator, which is basically an if-else statement on one line. There are examples of the if-else statement and the ternary operator on my website. The link is in the description. Next, let's set the font size to 40 and run the app to see how it looks. The final thing that we need to do is add our floating action button. When this button is pressed, we want to pass in that function that we created earlier. Set the background color to blue and let's give it a plus sign for the icon. Run the app to see how it works. Please hit like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Feel free to hit the notification bell or share these videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.